In part two of 3.1, introduction, we're going to focus on one science understanding, the physical properties of organic compounds that are influenced by the molar masses of the molecules and the number of, and polarity of functional groups. You'll need to be able to predict, explain and compare the melting points, boiling points and solubilities in water and in non-polar solvents of organic compounds given their structural formulae. I've put here that you should also refer back to stage one chemistry subtopic 4.1 on miscibility and solutions because this goes through the concepts of solubility. To look at explaining differences in the physical properties such as boiling points, we're going to consider a range of alkanes to begin with. So we have the smallest alkane which is methane or methane all the way through to hexane with six carbon atoms. We've got here their molar masses. So the mass of one mole of each of these compounds. And we have also the boiling points of these different alkanes as well. And what we should be able to see in particular is that there is a trend where the boiling points of these hydrocarbons is increasing. For another example, we've got alcohols going from the simplest being methanol up to hexan one ol Each of these groups consists of one hydroxyl functional group. We can see that the molar masses of each of these here are increasing and we can also note with the boiling points we get this similar increase like we did with the alkanes. So as you go to the bigger uh, alcohols the boiling points are increasing. Our observation is that the boiling points increase with increased molar mass for compounds with identical functional groups which we can also link into identical or similar polarity. To explain this, we would say that the strength of the dispersion forces between those molecules would be increasing as the molar mass increases. So we know that as their size or molar mass increases, uh, the number of electrons increases, which increases the ability to form dispersion forces through the formation of temporary dipoles and induced dipoles. On this slide here, I've compared a range of alkanes with an alcohol of similar molar mass. So we have ethane versus methanol here. We can note that their molar masses are quite similar, but then we do have a pretty significant difference in boiling points. And you'll be able to notice similar patterns with these combinations here and here as well. The observation being that the boiling points increase as the compounds with similar molar masses increase in polarity. So alkanes being non-polar, the alcohols being polar. The explanation is that there is a presence of dipole-dipole interactions as well as possibly hydrogen bonding that can increase the force of attraction between the molecules. To consider this I've got a diagram showing you propane and ethanol and starting off with propane over to the left these are what we call non-polar molecules and an indication of that is the fact it's only made up of carbons and hydrogens. It would have forces of attractions but these are relatively weak and they're what we refer to as dispersion forces. So these forces can form between any two molecules but they are generally considered the weaker type of interactions. For ethanol's case we can see that we've lined up these hydroxyl groups in this fashion and the attraction between them is what we call hydrogen bonding. So what we have is a hydrogen which is bonded to an electronegative atom like nitrogen or oxygen or fluorine is in turn then attracted to an electronegative nitrogen or oxygen or fluorine, these being the most electronegative atoms. And so it has these additional attractions. It would also have dispersion forces but these hydrogen bonds would actually be much stronger, which means that more energy is needed to separate ethanol molecules from one another compared to propane molecules, and therefore this results in the greater boiling point. To look at this further, we've got another range of compounds. We've got propane-1-ol, propanol, propanone, and ethanoic acid. These are their mm -hmm. condensed structural mm -hmm. formulae, and we can see that they all have very similar molar masses here but they do have some variation within their boiling points. Mm -hmm. 
To understand why this is the case, we'll have to look at each of the scenarios and look at what types of intermolecular forces can form between their molecules. So we saw before with alcohols, um, so it won't be any different to propan 1 ol We've lined up the hydroxyl groups in this fashion here. And so we would know that hydrogen bonding exists between alcohols at these hydroxyl groups. And it would also have dispersion forces like any other two molecules. We can see its boiling point is 97.2, which is on the high end. Our next molecule we had was propanol. And we do have the presence of polar functional groups, so this polar uh, aldehyde functional group. However, the force of attraction in this case is only dipole-dipole interactions, which is regarded as a weaker form of attraction. So as a result, its boiling point is actually going to be lower than that of propane one ol Our next example is propanone. So again, we have this polar ketone functional group here denoted by the partial negative and partial, partial positive charges. So we're going to be able to get an attraction between these groups here. This again is only dipole dipole interactions. It would also have dispersion forces as well, but you can see that its boiling point is still lower than propent 1 ol And then finally, we had our carboxylic acid, which is ethanoic acid. It consists of this polar carboxyl group, which is like a carbonyl group and a hydroxyl group joined together or combined, and we have multiple areas with partial negative and po positive charges. So this would allow for increased hydrogen bonding forming between these groups. And so as a result, ethanoic acid has the greatest boiling point. Now in any situation, you should only be able to compare between two different molecules where there's a clear difference in polarity. So maybe one has hydrogen bonding while the other one does not. And so from there, you should be able to work out which of the compounds has the higher boiling point. For one more example, looking at boiling point, we're going to consider two alcohols. We've got propan-1-ol and ethan-1-2-diol. They do have similar molar masses again, but we'll note that ethan-1-2-diol consists of two hydroxyl groups. And because it has more polar functional groups, we can see that it has the much greater boiling point. So to look at these two, it's really got to do with not the polarity of the functional groups, but the number of these polar functional groups that are present. Propan 1 ol consists of only one polar hydroxyl group, whereas ethan 1 2 dial consists of two polar hydroxyl groups. So both of these have the ability to form strong hydrogen bonding. And so as a result, we would have a much greater boiling point. For our next physical property, we're going to consider solubility. And as a bit of revision, solubility refers to the ability of a solute to dissolve, or in other words, become solvated in a solvent. The solvent's job must be able to separate and surround the solute particles so that they are separated from one another. This is dependent on a couple of things. It's dependent on size, which we know links into molar mass, and it also depends on polarity. We can employ this principle known as like dissolves like to understand whether a certain solvent will dissolve a particular solute. But keep in mind, this does not explain why a certain solvents will help dissolve particular solutes. We have to look at the types and the strengths of intermolecular forces. To do so, we're going to reconsider our alcohols. So starting from methanol and going down in this case to heptan 1 ol we can see that their molar masses do increase going from methanol to heptan 1 ol And in terms of solubility, the trend is that it goes from being soluble to then becoming insoluble. So in other words, solubility decreases as we go from top to bottom. So the observation is that the water solubility decreases as compounds increase in size. To explain this, we would say that organic compounds become increasingly nonpolar as their size or molar mass increases. This means it is increasingly difficult for polar water molecules to separate and surround the solutes because as they get bigger, they become more nonpolar with that larger hydrocarbon component. In this diagram, we have the alcohol octan 1 ol and 
the top two diagrams show us stable configurations. So these alcohol molecules can form strong hydrogen bonding at their hydroxyl sites. They can also form strong hydrogen bonding with water at this site. And water itself can form strong hydrogen bonding with itself. However, if we look on the bottom, the presence of water around this non-polar section of the alcohol is unstable because you end up forming much weaker dispersion forces between this section of the alcohol with polar water molecules. You have to factor in that there's a preference for water molecules to form hydrogen bonding with itself or only with this polar group here. So it isn't favorable for water and the non-polar component of this alcohol to form attractions given that it is weaker. So this helps explain why bigger molecules like bigger alcohols become more insoluble. To revise this property of solubility further, we can compare two molecules with similar mole masses. Again, we've got here butane versus propane 1 ol We've got similar molar masses as shown below, but we can see that propane 1 ol is what we say miscible, so we can add infinite amounts of propane 1 ol and it will dissolve in water and form what we call a homogeneous uh, solution. Whereas with butane, we can see it's got an extremely low solubility, so only 0.0061 grams of butane will dissolve in every 100 mils of water. The observation in this case is that the water solubility increases as the compounds increase in polarity. And to explain this, polar functional groups have the ability to form strong intermolecular forces such as dipole-dipole interactions and or hydrogen bonding with polar water molecules. In other words, the more polar, the stronger the intermolecular forces are going to be with water, and therefore the more soluble they'll be uh, compared to less polar molecules. This allows water to more readily separate and then surround the solutes. For a final example, we're going to consider butan one or and propanoic acid. We can see here that both substances have a similar molar mass to one another, so they're very close. Uh, butan one ol has a solubility in water of 7.3 grams per 100 ml. However, propanoic acid is completely miscible, so infinite amounts of propanoic acid will dissolve in water. So in this case, we would say that propanoic acid would be more polar than butan one ol and that is contributed by its more polar functional group. This is what we call the polar carboxyl functional group. You can see that both have this OH group, but the addition of this carbon to oxygen double bond is going to make it more polar. From this, we could say propanoic acid has more opportunities to form hydrogen bonds with water. So this allows for water to more readily separate and surround propanoic acid molecules compared to butan one ol molecules. That concludes our work on 3.1 introduction. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.